the illusion of having a bigger bicep than it really is. Oh yeah. I mean, his bicep looks really good there. It's comparable to his forearm and his, to his tricep and to the deltoids and to the tie-in of his chest muscles. Uh, you know, first time I met Scotty, he made claim he had a 17-inch arm. Remember it was 15 that? and a half. Yeah, I remember. Well, that. don't tell him it's 15 and a half. Tell him you made claim to 17 inches, and you pull out the tape measure and found out that your tape measure it, it really, yeah, it really was. Yeah, on, the tape on that tape measure. Yeah, it was. And I went home and I go, you know, what? <laughs> I was thinking there's only one thing that could go. Let me, let me get the real measuring thing, the stick. And I, oh man, it's took out 15. And it took half. out a yardstick. It shrank. Yeah. I go, that guy, he was right, man. Like but you know, the thing <laughs> is, is that bodybuilding is nothing but an illusion, and. Today's world of bodybuilding is nothing but mass, mass appeal, mass muscle, more muscle, larger muscles, rounder muscles, but it doesn't have the aesthetic separation of lines. So back in our day, when we started training, we were looking at maintaining a certain amount of body fat, but increasing the muscle mass. And just recently, this last couple of weeks, a couple of young guys in the gym that I was training at was a fitness center, Fitness 19 in Pico Rivera. I said, uh, so what are you getting ready for? And he said, oh, we're getting ready for the summer. I said, well, you're going to get ready for the summer. What are you getting ready for? You're going to compete? He goes, oh, no, we're just going to shred up for the summer. And I thought, why would you want to be shredding up when you have this point in time in your life where you need to be growing muscle mass? And they said, well, we've got to cut up, and then we're going to grow muscle mass, and then we're going to cut up. And I said, no, 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 no. You're defeating the purpose. You want to maintain a certain amount of body fat, body fat while you're increasing your muscle mass over a period of time. And that's the foundation of your growth. And in doing so, there is no off season. There is no time to shred up. That's, you know, if you want to shred up for summer, if it's summer break and you want to look good for the girls or the girls want to look good for the guys, that's great. That's your purpose of being in the gym. But if you want to be a bodybuilder, that's not your purpose. Your purpose is to be one day step on stage on that, on that podium and represent all the hard work that you've done in your lifetime. Which brings me back to a point of what brings someone to that place where they want to become a bodybuilder. What makes one young man say, I want to be, I want to walk on the beach and look good, and another young man say, I want to get on stage on that podium and look aesthetically beautiful. Well, I can't talk about other men or other young men. I can only talk about me and my youth and my time. And when I first started lifting weights, I had one purpose in mind, and that was to become the greatest physique ever. Now, if you would have heard me say that at that time, I was six foot two, 143 pounds. I was a flagpole. So obviously everybody would have laughed. So a lot of times guys would say, what are you doing in this gym? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do your purpose? And I said, I'm gonna compete one day. Well, when I see people nowadays, when they say, I'm gonna compete one day, I'm not looking for muscle mass. I'm looking for genetic potential, the bone skeletal form. I'm looking at the bellies of the muscles, the insertions, the origins. Do they have that nice V taper already that genetically was given to them? given to them as a blessing actually from God, from their parents. If they have that, then they're already on their way. Now, this doesn't mean that someone that doesn't have the genetic potential cannot be on stage one day. Because let's face it, there's a lot of contests out there that you can, come, that you can compete in. Uh, back in my day, to get a pro qualifying card, it was like once a year, maybe twice a year. Nowadays, there's a contest every other week to get a pro qualifying card. Does this help the bodybuilder? I don't think so. It keeps them from their potential. So. You know, what is, what, what is your purpose? When we first started training, what was your purpose, Scott? I was the skinniest kid in the school. I just wanted to get something, some muscles. Yeah. My dad was doing it, so of course I thought it was cool. Then I set my goals. My arm was eight and a half. And I thought 11 would be pretty cool. And I thought, I'm gonna do it, you know, 11 inch arm. By the time I got my 10 inch arm, I went the 12 inch arm and just kept going. And, and then I didn't know about nutrition, so I was getting a little bit fat, a little bit here and there. And I actually met Rory right around 78, 79, and they started training me. And I just changed everything. I actually started doing the whole body. I wasn't even doing my shoulders, I wasn't doing my back really. No, so First time I did legs, I couldn't walk for three days. You learn to love legs. <clears throat> I learned that, you learn to love legs because you learn by by your love for legs. This man, when he competed, would win the best legs. Back in our day, we used to have body part. We win best legs, best poser. Um, I had no idea. I didn't train him for so many years, and people made fun of me. 
Hey, you should work your legs. So I did, finally did my legs, and they, they were over one summer, they went from my worst body part to my best body part. Actually, you still have legs, and you still have your calves. Yep. Look at this. I mean, right now, competition bodybuilders would love to have those calves. Competing yeah. bodybuilders. This is not a 64 year old Yeah, 64. Yeah, they're they're kind of they're kind of cute. They look yeah. pretty damn good. Yeah. yeah. Plus you got the, you still got the tan because you're a nature man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of the sun. The sun lives at my property. Turn around and show them the back of your calves. <laughs> Did your grandpa walk with those kind of calves? <laughs> That's where I make them. Yeah. That's my spot. Right there. See, here's my, here's my cap machine. That's all I do. I don't use any weight now. Yeah, buddy. This one actually, the one I didn't tear. It got torn on that there. <laughs> That's the one right there. See, now, looking at his calves, are they 16 inches? Are they 18 inches? Are they 22 inches? Or are they just awesome calves? They're awesome calves. Measuring tapes have nothing to do with anything. The only time measuring tapes actually work is uh, when uh, they're trying to make a coffee and they have to know the size of the cadaver. <laughs> oh, my girlfriend likes to use certain body parts. But nothing's grown. <laughs> <laughs> that thing grows quick. <laughs> and it shrinks in for, to a certain point. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, I really, I really want to emphasize to young people out there, it's not about your tape measure. It's not about the scale. Of course, your height, there's nothing you can do about that. You are your height. Uh, all I ask you now is to stand tall. I've known guys six foot five, and I've known guys five foot five. And I've seen guys that are six foot five walk around like they're five foot five, and I've seen guys five foot five walk tall. And that's what I want. I want you all to walk tall out there. And know that it's not the scale, it's not the measuring tape, it's the aesthetics of your physique. Uh, when I first when I first started training, I you know I, I looked at so many physiques. I've seen so many physiques in my lifetime. Uh, my dad used to be a bodybuilder, still is. He, he trains four times a week, and he had these magazines laying around. And uh, I would see p pictures of like John Grimmick, Clancy Ross, uh, Freddie Ortiz. Then I'd see people like Steve Reeves that became marketed and was, was all over the magazine world. Of course, I saw him in the Hercules movies, and I was like, wow, that's awesome. That's what I want to look like. And then, you know, there was men like Bill Pearl and Chuck Sipes that were men's men that were very powerful looking. And then I saw the myth, and I went, wow, that's unbelievable. Those bellies and that muscles are insane. And then, you know, bodybuilding furthered me. And then I saw people like Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I saw Frank Zane, Calvin Scalak, Franco Colombo. And they were, in, I was in awe of all of them, but not like the awe that I was in one day when I didn't look at a magazine. It was a contest. It was 1979, Orange County. I had just done the Mr. L.A. contest and was told I should have done the Universe instead of the Novice L.A., which there was no Novice L.A., so I thought I'd enter the Junior L.A. But there's no Junior L.A., so I had to enter the Mr. L.A. I really didn't want to enter the Mr. L.A. because that was the contest that most people got ready for the Cal and the America for it. And Tom Platts told me backstage, what are you doing in this contest? You should be in the universe. I went, Tom, this is my very first show. So that's when the sport first knew about me. So I went to the Orange County with my wife, Cynthia, and we sat there, and um, Dave Draper, Serge Nubre, and his wife were guest posing, I remember. And we had front row seats. And after Dave Draper posed, which was awesome, the blonde bomber, he's got to be awesome, man. I remember him watching him in Don't Make Waves and all these other young Hercules uh, television shows. This gentleman walked up on stage and I just stopped. Everything was moving, but I just stopped. And I was in awe. And this gentleman's name was Sergeant Gray. And as he posed, I could not believe what I saw. And at the end of his posing routine, my wife looked at me as everybody was standing, applauding. She saw tears running out of my eyes. And she says, you want to be on stage one day again, don't you? I said, no, I want to look like that individual on stage. He was not only aesthetically beautiful, but he carried an aura about him, this, this perfection aura. Now, no, he wasn't perfect, but I could tell that his quest was to be perfect. And that's what I wanted to do in the sport. My quest was to be as perfect as I possibly could. So to be the best in the sport, who knows, that's subjective. But be the best you possibly can, that's obtainable.